I'm MM and I ask a lot of questions. I'm Pia and I don't have a filter. We'll be asking questions you dare not ask. And giving answers that might be a little too honest. So listen up, come and eavesdrop. This is The, the Cheese Miss Table. Will you, can you say that I am full of self-esteem? <laughs> yes, based from your makeup, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I really grew up thinking I was the best. <laughs> oh, I, well, I really grew up thinking I was the best. Because school said so. I mean, in our school, I was about to yeah. say our school's name, but yes. I don't think we can. Um, I had the best <laughs> grades. Yeah, I had good extracurricular curricular. She was she was our batch salutatory. <laughs> I was very smart. Yes, you, everyone you around are. Was, you still are. <laughs> I am past tense. <laughs> <laughs> everyone around me said that I was amazing, and I felt amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then <Okay. laughs> we had batch mates. Um, both in high school and mm. in college, mm. I had batchmates. We had batchmates uh, that did that got into so much trouble. You know, they yeah. they were almost kicked out, and they did really really terrible things. And somehow, because kids can be kind of dumb, mm-hmm. these are the people who were seen as cool, right? Okay, yeah, they were mm. the in crowd. Mm, but and as a uh, at a young age. Even before then, because I'm fucking full of myself, <laughs> I already felt sorry for them oh. because I thought ah, these people will have a very bad future. <laughs> They're not gonna get anywhere, you know. And then I go into college, and so I graduated as mm. I graduated high school, mm. and then I went mm. into college thinking yeah. I was super smart. <laughs> But as we know, we went into the state university. Yes. With a bazillion smart people. And yes. I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm not as smart as I thought. But, but, I'm still in that university. I still yeah. went to the quota course. And I was really good friends and I'm really good friends with the number one in our batch. Mm-hmm. Not just our uh, course, but mm-hmm. in the whole university. Okay. So I thought, well, he's not going to be my friend if he thinks I'm stupid. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm still good. <laughs> I figured I will have an amazing life, the perfect career ahead of me mm-hmm. until the real world hit me right in the face. <laughs> And none of the rules that I ever knew applied. <laughs> you. And, okay. Right? And then when we graduate, it's anyone's game. Yes. And... I there was a study that I saw before and mm. it said like why are valedictorians salutatorians um, not as successful as they are <laughs> so there is a study that oh, says okay. that um, when you are a salutatorian or valedictorian in in, in the academic uh, stage mm. you are trained to be a generalist so ah, you're good okay. at you know you know how to do a lot of things mm. But in the real world, the people who really succeed are those who have specializations. Ah, um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so we were trained not to have a specialization. We mm. were trained not to have a specific passion or mm, to mm-hmm. focus ourselves on one thing and go for it. Because to be a salutatorian, yeah. I have to you know, be good, sort of good at everything. So my focus is scattered. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, it's all over. Jack of all trades, master of none. Master of none. Yes. So (laughs) in some, some, sometimes it's okay, Mm. but you know, there, the, it's being the jack of all trades is relative too. Okay. Right. So, you know, you know, I have an insight on that, but it's not based like, on research or. Okay, fine. (laughs) See, that's a difference, Em. (laughs) You know, because recently I was trying to teach my, I was telling my yaya, my baby's yaya, that, you know, early on in my child's life, I will teach her, like, chores in the house, mm-hmm. like cleaning her room, uh, cooking, whatever. And then our yaya told us that, you know, you shouldn't do that because magsasawa siya. Or, like, mm-hmm. she would uh, get tired of it easily. So I feel like people who are already successful early on in their lives, 
Mm. Parang they get lazy na or they get too too tamad to to try harder because they've already achieved uh, a yeah. lot of success early on. So maybe that's why after high school. <laughs> you know what that also <laughs> And uh, maybe that's also it, cause See, I mean, my, research. <laughs> my, um, my as you know, my mom was very, very, very strict when it comes to academics. And then when I got the taste of freedom, I'm like, yeah. whatever. I, nobody's, <laughs> you know, nobody's monitoring me anymore. Yep. Um, but be, because that that was my upbringing when it mm. comes to academics. I mean. When we, it, I don't think it's the same now. But when we were younger and we, when yes. we were still in school, we were made to think that you have to have the best grades so mm-hmm. that you can have the best life. Yep. And maybe before it was kind of true because when we started, uh, what do you call this? When you started going into or applying for jobs, mm-hmm. obviously those who were at the top of of the class would yeah. have jobs earlier. And because I came from business school. My idea of a successful job is I get into a management training, mm-hmm. you know, program, yeah. and then you get fast track into whatever, um, and that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I start seeing posts of our batchmates. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what about our batchmates? <laughs> you know, like they weren't really great <laughs> in school, but like. How are they putting up their own businesses, or mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. can they be working in the in a different country? That is for me the worst feeling. Mm-hmm. That when I saw some of my our batchmates, um, that I felt wasn't as good as me, <laughs> flying off to another yeah. country and getting a job there. I'm mm. like. How did that happen? <laughs> Why isn't anyone asking me to move for a job? And that was the start of what am I doing wrong? Mm, okay. <laughs> did you ever have yeah, any? Of course. I think everyone goes through a sort of a, what do you call that? Career envy. Is career that the envy. Term? Yes, career <laughs> envy. Everyone goes through that sort of thing. I remember having that when I was in high school, even. I was so young when I started having career envy because I was uh, doing TV commercials then. Ah, oh. I know. I was doing TV commercials then, and I would never ever land a lead role. I was always mm. the extra. I was always mm. the barcada, the friend <laughs> behind, the person who would walk, and then you wouldn't even see because commercials <laughs> are what thirty seconds, and I was yeah. there for like half a second. So <laughs> it started then that I'm like, what's what's wrong with me? Like I felt, I felt like I was. I was pretty enough. Like I was, I had good skin. I I was a great dancer. But every time I would go into, and I did a lot of these, uh, what do you call that? Uh, go sees and auditions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did yeah. a lot of those, and that was the first time maybe in my life. Because social media wasn't, there wasn't any yeah. social media then when yeah. we were in high school. So. During that time, I would see all of these Brazilian models, and <laughs> like, wow! I already felt so so. I, w- I felt like I was one of the pretty girls in in high school. But when I would go to all of these auditions and castings, I'm like, okay, I'm not so pretty after all. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was, I think, the first time that I ever felt envious of mm-hmm. anyone, and especially now, a lot of. My batchmates then, we, we all started together. We were all extras. Now they they're getting all of these lead roles in <gasps> in different commercials, and they I mean like they look so for me they look like ordinary people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like yes they they do look good, but I mean like there's nothing that different that they have. That, mm-hmm. So that was maybe the start of how I did. You ever videos. figure out what made them? The lead and not you. I figured that out when I already started working. When What? I when I got into marketing because we would do all of these commercials and then we would yeah. do all of the castings. Then I realized, okay, so there is this specific uh, look that they're looking for mm. in, for a certain character. So it what it took how many years before I got over that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that envy because I didn't really I. All the while, I thought it was just you know if you're pretty, if you're good looking, mm-hmm. you'll get that role. I didn't think yeah. that they're looking for this specific profile for that specific role. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then I'm like, okay, fine, maybe 
it's not really uh, an issue of, of how I look. It's an issue of if the role fits for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know what's funny? Because mm. look at what we're comparing. You're <laughs> about pretty looks. Yeah. And yeah. I'm about brain. I'm so smart. <laughs> smarter than other people. Why are they more successful than me? <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes, you know, you have to really think of what's that my, the term? You have to look on the outside instead of, <laughs> instead of what's on the inside. Yeah. Well, when, when, you start, when did you start feeling that way? It's, um, I've always wanted to work abroad. I think that's yeah. the very root of my envy. So I didn't really think of it until a few years into my career. Mm. Because um, I, I I still wasn't sure about what my idea of success would look like. Ah, okay. Um, until I saw my batchmates both mm. uh, in school and um, when I got my first job because we were in all in one program. Until I saw them being sent to mm. the headquarters in yeah. Switzerland or in Singapore in the hubs. Um, granted, I left that company already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But still, you know, I was thinking, like, how can they, not that I don't think I'm better than them, but at mm. the very least, I'm just as good. Yeah. So yeah. how could they have succeeded in that end? And then mm. I'm here stuck um, being a local. <laughs> <laughs> not an and like, yeah. Yeah. And there mm. are a lot of... Um, reasons i think and a lot of this is coming from my my immaturity mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> life in general um and this is also a lot of things ingrained into us when we were growing up yep. um but like again it's all about grades or mm. when i see people who like i said they weren't really doing very well when we were in school yep. in fact they are almost failed throughout school but somehow they're just friggin' rich and successful and they they can travel everywhere and they can afford all of these things <laughs> and they keep thinking like i did all the right things yeah i did everything that mm. we were supposed to do mm -hmm. but i'm not as rich and i'm not yeah, as yeah. you know um i love money em <laughs> <laughs> i know that who doesn't <laughs> And you can always want more, right? Yeah. That's true. Um, but somehow others still have more than I do. And yeah. I'm like, how did that how do happen? how did that happen? You know, we have a, we have a friend who actually didn't uh, graduate from college. <laughs> he didn't Wait, are you thinking college. about this? Yes, I think we're like our super rich friend. He, yes, he was a oh, job. He was a Oh, I didn't know. He didn't graduate? He didn't oh, graduate didn't college. Okay. He, he got kicked out of school when we were young. And mm. then I think he was homeschooled or he kept transferring uh. different schools. Yeah. Then he didn't really finish college. But now he's earning six digits a month. And then he would show me his, his paycheck or his payslip. I'm like, F you. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything. Exactly. I did everything by the book. I'm like, I studied hard. I graduated with honors. I did every. I took all the extracurriculars, and now you're earning <laughs> six digits for what? For smiling and talking. <laughs> and he would just laugh, you know. <laughs> but that's true. It's so yeah. true. And I think you nailed it in the head. You said you did everything by the book, and that's yes. our problem. <laughs> That's what you don't have. We don't have, I think, that street smarts that, that they have. That yeah. certain type of uh, discarte. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's, it's also a lot of hard work that yeah. I don't have. <laughs> I, I'm super lazy. And I am, but I am very smart, you know. Yes, so, you are. <laughs> I like things done efficiently mm -hmm. and I like things done very quickly and easily. Uh, it may not be like literally easy to do, yeah. but in the easiest way I can think of. Um, but that mindset doesn't really make you a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but that <laughs> actually makes you smart because you know how to find ways to make things easier for you. I know, but I want to be rich more than smart. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you actually you talked about uh, being a management trainee earlier. Mm-hmm. You know, after mm-hmm. I graduate, I remember I graduated college and then I only had that mindset that I only want to be a management trainee of either uh, PNG or Unilever. <laughs> for some reason, when we were in college, that was the thing that we were teaching us. That, you know, That's you have, true. Hey, it's like about, the epitome of a, yes. a successful graduate. You get into these FNCGs. The graduate has to be yeah. in, in PNG and Unilever. And I just... I just didn't get in. Maybe because of my mm. course. Maybe I lacked a lot of things. But when I would compare myself, that's a thing. We should we always compare ourselves <laughs> to our friends. But that's a good thing because at least you have a benchmark, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like I guess <laughs> it could be a benchmark, or yeah. they could be a source of insecurity, <laughs> <laughs> or a source of inspiration. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I have the wrong perspective. Maybe you're looking at it at a, at a different at a different angle. So anyway, so going back to that management training, I never <laughs> got into PNG Unilever mm-hmm. any of those FMCGs, but I did get into a management trainee program uh, yeah. of a life insurance company, so which was good for me. But I never lost that feeling of wanting to be in in PNG or Unilever. So mm-hmm. whenever I have uh, an MBA classmate that Oh, I even took MBA thinking that maybe eventually <laughs> they would take me in their graduate program. But no, I still didn't get it. <laughs> so whenever I would have classmates that it's like uh, either from PNG or just joined PNG while we were in, in our MBA program, I'm like, what what the hell do you have that I don't? <laughs> like, I feel I'm more I'm more hardworking and Oh, but, but the thing is, they had very, you were right earlier, they had very specific um, skill sets. Mm, that one, mm-hmm. is, he's, a, he's a finance person, he's a finance major. Who's That's the thing. Why, why did we get into communications? <laughs> I don't know. This was by an accident. I'm, now, you know, because we talk to executives a lot in, mm. in a comms role. Mm-mm. And the more I'm, I go deeper into comms, the more I realize, oh my God, I'm never going to be head of a company <laughs> ever from comms. I mean, unless I own my company, which is what's yeah. doing, what's, what's happening, happening now. now. Yeah. Um, but you know, when I was still in the corporate world, I was thinking, Fudge as comms, they will <laughs> never choose me as CEO. And yeah. obviously, the, the richest CEO, uh, the richest person in the company is the CEO. And yes. I'll never be that. <laughs> I don't know of any comms person who is a CEO. Like I would yeah. know uh, see, uh, an, op- an operations head, an IT mm-hmm. head, sales, a sales usually. head, or a marketing mm-hmm. head, but. Even a marketing head, it's very not it's very rare. Yeah, we're going back to our comms topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going back. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, the, I have very specific because mm. you were mentioning about uh, you're talking about getting into PNG, right? Yeah. And um, I do know of people who go who got certain roles in certain companies, and mm, I think mm. and I think how the hell did you get in there? Yeah, but I do have a friend who academically didn't really perform very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wasn't stupid. It's, it's really just his focus wasn't on school. Okay. Um, and we were super, we we're really good friends. And I really vouched for him because mm-hmm. I knew he was brilliant in marketing. And he did get into PNG. And mm-hmm. out of all of us in our, in our group, he was the only one who got in because obviously mm. we all tried for PNG, but he was yeah. the only one who got in. But when he, he got in, to me, there was no career envy because I knew mm. that he deserved it. Yeah. He was perfect for the role and that he is really, really good at what he was set out to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's really my criteria yeah. <laughs> for people <laughs> who don't deserve what they have is <laughs> very shallow. And again, this is all born out of immaturity, born out of, yeah. you know, um, a really unhealthy bias and probably <laughs> insecurity. But every time I see somebody like, number one, who I knew didn't do very well in school. Mm. And then they're like, oh, 
own their company again out in in the world doing greater things than I'm doing or I have another uh, former colleague in my mm. former company I feel like if I get any more specific people will they, know who they this will person know. is <laughs> but I mean <laughs> this person I won't even say if it's a female or male okay this person was a soup is a super nice person mm-hmm this person is really smart too um and then this person was handpicked oh. to go to the international headquarters mm. of that company that i was in before mm-hmm. and this person stayed there for years and even in that international hq um <laughs> the person uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, got promoted and got promoted wow. mm. and then I would follow the person on social media mm-hmm. and those photos were just beautiful <laughs> like, everything was amazing and then the person found a partner who was equally as beautiful wow. and successful and my god I was so jealous like, <laughs> oh every time I saw a photo of them mm-hmm. on Instagram, yeah. I would, there would really be a physical <laughs> um, manifestation. manifestation like I would yeah. really feel my heart constrict <laughs> out of jealousy. So I unfollowed them and I blocked them <laughs> on Instagram because I was so petty. Wow, how, how I immature like, Pia. <laughs> I know, I, I can't deal with and, this anymore. How old, how old were you when you did this? Um, recently. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would understand if you were like 25, but oh, hello, we're 33, no. okay? We're 30 no. old. <laughs> I know, okay? And then the person re- got went back home, I think. Okay. Because we, we don't talk anymore. Or we don't really interact anymore. But I saw photos of the person back here. Um, but still, they're, <laughs> they're still perfect. I was like, what the <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think no. I don't think I wait. I'm gonna check. I don't think I blocked, but well, I definitely unfollowed. unfollowed because I just can't bear to see any more happy memories, <laughs> happy milestones. <laughs> Why can't you just be happy for them? Because you are. I'm petty and insecure. <laughs> It's not that I want them to have a terrible life, okay? Yeah. Just to be clear, I don't wish them ill. I just wish myself better. Because <laughs> everything is about me. <laughs> and not about them. Because not about them. Who cares, who cares about their life? Exactly, no. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you unfollowed and blocked them. But you I, know what? The, I hmm. blame society. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Are you blaming society for putting so much pressure on ah. where people are supposed to go yeah, and yeah. especially for for me when i was growing up the pressure wasn't just from my mom mm. or my family in general okay and in, in my family including my extended family i was deemed as one of the smarter mm, okay. uh, people yeah well, my cousins and everyone else so everyone was like, okay, this person, Pia is the one ah, who's going to Most likely be to the... succeed. Exactly. Yes, so that okay. happened there. Yeah. And then in school, although I appreciated all the recognition that I mm. had with all the medals mm. and whatever, mm. it was again reinforcing that, okay, you are the top, so you better do certain things that would um, justify you being the top, right? So... Like, I remember the first amount of pressure was when we were uh, taking entrance exams mm. for university. For college, I yeah. told my mom, yeah. And I, I, sigurista kasi ako eh. So mm. I wanted to make sure that I had enough options. And I told my mom I wanted to take uh, exams from the top three and then mm. a few others that I okay. thought would be cool. Okay. And my mom was like, no, because... Well, if you don't pass any of these three, that's going to be a source of embarrassment because I am the top. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I should be able to get into the three, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I did. Okay. Um, but, you know, these small yeah. nuggets of yeah. nines and the mm-hmm. constant 
pressure, um, pressure and, and monitoring yes, of how yes. well I'm doing. I think that's really just ingraining uh, a very deep, ano ba, a very deep uh, idea yeah. of what my life is supposed to look like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And unfortunately for everybody who expected something, I went the complete opposite. <laughs> Something that you didn't expect. Yeah, something that you didn't yeah. expect. You know, I remember what this line I will never forget mm. ever. And this happened in college. So uh, in college, I, I I entered the university with a double degree, Mm-mm. which I really didn't like. I just asked my dad what he, what he thought was. You didn't like your course? No, I hated my course, <laughs> but I was already in it. Okay. Just like my job, you know, this is the only thing I know how to do, so whatever. Okay. <laughs> I asked my dad what course would earn me the most money. <laughs> so he suggested the course mm, that I was in, mm-mm. which is business ad and accountancy. So yeah. double major, quota course. It's a little prestigious because yes. it's hard to get into, so I went into it. And then uh, on my, I think that was towards third year, mm. Um. I failed the. Yes, I, didn't I remember get that. The grade. Yeah, right? I didn't get the grade. I, it wasn't a fail, but the required grade is a bit higher than mm. the failing grade. Um, and there was a chance to appeal, but I really, I really hated accounting. <laughs> like I just, and I'm glad that I, I fell out of it. Yeah, because, like I can't imagine myself being an accountant or being in finance, um, forever. But yeah. yeah, and then so I, I'm like. Oh my gosh! I I didn't get the grade, <laughs> and then I was so devastated. And more of that is embarrassment because mm. shoot, everybody knew knows that yeah. you know I'm this kind of person, and I shouldn't be failing this. Mm-hmm. So I have a good friend who's also a very very mean person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but we're really good friends, and he was the one who comforted me throughout the whole thing. Um, And he was very good to me at the time. But mm-hmm. when I calmed down from the devastation of plunking out of it, I said, I asked him, you think it's okay if I just really opt out? And then mm-hmm. he goes, it's okay, but shame on our school for producing such a substandard salutatorian. <laughs> That happened. Oh second God. year college and i yes. still remember i will text Please. you later i still remember very very vividly that lion and i think i carried that <laughs> i'm in shock <laughs> Grabe, you, see, ko sino ka man. <laughs> you know it's exactly who this person is so you know and he okay. said it that way Mm-mm. Because he's also a straightforward person, Mm-mm. but um, in so many ways, everyone else around me had the same sentiment towards me. Also, oh, just not yeah. as you know, just they not as just blatant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, people didn't say that directly to yeah. me, but that's how I felt from uh, a lot of people around me. Um, and there, these aren't a lot of people, mm-hmm. but. People who are important yeah. to me, so what they say and what they think and what they expect mattered, mm. and I guess that I carried that into my my adult life, <laughs> and I'm still very insecure about you know how people perceive my success, maybe mm, or lack mm, thereof. Mm. Um, and I try to uh, get over it, mm-hmm. but. I guess I'm not mature enough <laughs> <laughs> to completely accept myself. <laughs> and Wait, be happy. Why, why didn't you take uh, entrance exams for universities abroad if you wanted to to work abroad in the first place? Because I didn't know I wanted to do abroad until I started ah, working, until okay, I okay. saw people doing it. Mm, and mm, it mm. wasn't really, um, I don't know, I just never thought of that. In high, cause wait, I mean, we were high school when we were mm-hmm. taking college entrance exams and we, yeah. we never, who knows what they wanted right <laughs> until it's too late <laughs> and then you take another degree after graduating yeah. from college yeah. yeah and that's another thing mm. first of all i did express my intention to 
uh, want to try studying abroad, but my okay. dad was saying he doesn't want to um, cover it. And he, he was saying, if I get a good enough job and if I get high enough in a company, the company mm. will fund Should it. Should be able to pay it. Yeah. yeah. And he's right. But again, there's that well, if you're successful enough, then, you know, they will pay for you. Mm. So again, I'm thinking, okay, um, so that means to me, for, to have a good career, I have to have a job mm-hmm. who will pay for my uh, graduate school. Um, so that's one part of it. And the second part is after um, all the, the expectations from school, I just realized I don't want to study anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See, so my fear is right. Done. What? The, you've been studying all your life. So after that, you're <laughs> like, okay, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yep. I hate it. I, I don't want to sit in a classroom. I don't want to yeah. take exams anymore. I'm just done. I don't want to do anything about it mm. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so is there like a qualification for, for a person that you'd be you'd feel envious of? Or you feel envious of everyone who's like abroad? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess it's if 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 in in my personal and mm. my highlight personal opinion, <laughs> they don't deserve it more than I do. Okay. Then I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, you know, I I remember this this guy. Okay, I I'm not gonna name. Even if I don't say his name, people would know who he is. <laughs> Anyway, so there's this guy. Uh, mm-hmm. He was our batchmate in high school. Mm-hmm. I used to date him also. Then now, he's working in Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that guy, when we were dating, I, I, I don't, I don't particularly, <laughs> I don't particularly, <laughs> I don't particularly remember him being uh, the smart one or True. the person True. who has a lot of insights or mm-hmm. who has a lot of mm-hmm. sense. Like I would know he's fun to be with. He's a good uh, sports player, but <laughs> <laughs> like really to get into to Google, like really okay. <laughs> and then the thing about it, you know, it's okay, like. I, I'm happy for him that, that he's in... Okay, we're not close anymore, so I can talk about him. <laughs> it's okay that he got into Google, but, you know, to to really brag about it and to... Does he? He does. Well, according to his friends, mm-hmm. to brag about it and to tell people... I would do, though. I mean, I got it. Yeah, and it's not true. Google Philippines, right? No, it's no, Google it's like International. Google headquarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I would do it. I would tell everybody. I would have like a Google <laughs> label. I'd be decked out in Google merch. Working, and working like, in Google, guys. Guys, who are Google. you? I'm working in Google. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe okay, fine, okay, fine. I, I'd, I'd give it to him, but but you know, he did. He he didn't really. I'm not sure how he got in. <laughs> not sure how. Maybe connections. That's the thing. Also, <laughs> one thing I learned when when we started, we're laughing. But wait, to be what? fair to him, mm. he left uh, the Philippines when early. When right? we were uh, around first or second year high school. Mm. Yeah. So maybe to his credit, maybe between that time until he went to Google, maybe he became better because he don't really know. I but know. I understand the surprise because I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yeah. another another criteria for my career and hmm. me is if they're just perfect. Like that guy, like he's super hot. <laughs> he's rich. Yes. And he has a good job. Like why? And his Why wife do you have is so hot also. Super hot as super well. Hot. I'm like, how can you have your <laughs> But, you know, and but then I have a friend. So mm. I guess that's also a creator. I have a friend, again, a really close friend, who <laughs> I feel guilty because they might figure it's them. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not naming names. <laughs> no, but they, it might be obvious. Um, I have a friend who uh, is currently working and one of my favorite countries. Um, he has a really good job. He has always been well off, mm. but he's not super handsome. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. And the struggle on that end is very palpable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that doesn't pull at my my heartstrings in terms of career envy because there's mm-hmm. a part of him that's like. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. <laughs> may, I know. I'm happy looking way. like this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, apparently. Yeah, you can't have it all. So if Some the, people do. So if the person has it all, if that's like your basis for, for career in. It's one. And then, mm. like I said, if the person is dumber than me... <laughs> <laughs> That's also career envy. <laughs> no, you know, good thing I got over this career envy at, at an early point in my life. <laughs> when? When was it? Uh, I. When was this? When I joined uh, BPI Telam. That was what? 2016? Mm. 2000, okay. Around 2016, 2000. Oh, that was even fairly recent, huh? I was 28 when I joined. See? Yeah. wasn't that far. <laughs> <laughs> I was 28 when I, when I, you know, when I'm not as envious anymore. And I realized that, you know, because there are a lot of talks about, you know, you are your only competition. Yeah. And <laughs> all of these wisdom from different speakers that, you know, you shouldn't compare yourself to other people. Mm, so yeah. it all got into me. And then I got the role that I really liked. And mm. maybe I, I had fun doing it. I was, I finally found something that I enjoyed doing, so I got contented with with what I was doing. But you know, there's still a, a little, a little, little envy na lang. But I look at it more <laughs> as an inspiration or more of wow, him. so mature. I know I'm so mature <laughs> now. It's, you it's are. You grow up, M. I know, and I don't have. I have <laughs> I don't have these petty qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. I think you would get over it once you find a full contentment of the things that you have in your life, like your career, your family, yeah. your, well, I hope so, because, you know, we're not getting any younger. I know. Maybe, guys, just make me an artist already. <laughs> <laughs> can someone call Mr. M, please? Can, so, can you just watching make me... this, if you reach this... I just this, really want to be a star. <laughs> If you've already reached this point in this video, please. <laughs> if you're already supporting us that much, please help my friend. You know, she wants to be this. an artista. <laughs> I want to have a billboard in Edsa. <laughs> that's, that's our ultimate, you know. You know, I mean, life. gosh. I thought when I started in comms and mm. we started doing all these campaigns and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a step closer to being a star because you would work with celebrities and whatever. Yes. And then I realized, no, I'm on the wrong side of the camera. <laughs> you think you'll get yeah. over this career envy anytime soon? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know, sometimes, I don't know because, you know, and the challenge there is I really don't know. I know I say all the time that I want to be an artista, but that's kind of not realistic anymore mm. but I, I don't really know what I really want to do I don't really know where I want to bring my career again up until this point I am still kind of going by the book mm. I went through mm. every stage yeah. that we were supposed to go through right we went to I did well in school graduated with honors um, got good jobs and then now I have my own company mm-hmm. and I thought when I was younger, actually, because my dad has very, very successful companies. So okay. that was my idea of success. Okay. Um, and I thought, and he was also encouraging all of us to be entrepreneurs because mm. he doesn't think that, um, you know, there's much success being an employee yeah. mm. um, because um, there's a limit to the, su- rather, yep. there's a limit to the su- to a success, to success mm-hmm. if you're an employee. Again, mm-hmm. that tightly depends on where, what company you're really working in. Yeah. But, um, you know, he preferred us to be entrepreneurs so that we mm. can essentially dictate what we wanted to do. Um, so that was what I was striving for mm-hmm. uh, throughout my entire career. And I didn't expect to have my own company this early. Um, so now that I do have it, I'm like, so what next? <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, okay. okay, what do I do now? Um, I mean, okay. If you're, if you're going <laughs> by the book, have a family. <laughs> <laughs> Build your own house. I know, right? So, yeah. Um, but that's like a completely separate, no, not separate, but it's a completely, you know, different path mm, in terms of mm-hmm. family stuff and mm-hmm. building the house. But yeah. I consider career as a, a, a an independent entity of our lives. Okay. So I really don't know what to do after. I mean, and sometimes I ask people like, okay, what do I do next? And then they're like, build it bigger, make mm, it bigger, mm. build an empire out of it. Whatever. Yeah. But that's not really why we put up this company. Like we put up the company so that we can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah. Not really to earn <laughs> So that much. we can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are enjoying a good level of success and stability, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not ha- as, as, fulfilling as I expected it to be and again it's because it's really not my end goal apparently I thought it was but then when I got it it apparently isn't Mm -hmm. and then the big question is I don't know what my end goal is (laughs) (laughs) so that like that's what my boss actually tells me all the time like I have to uh um like internalize yeah really look into myself like what is it that I really want to do and mm. I don't know I don't think a lot of people know the answer to that anyway regardless of, of age right nope. nope so sometimes I think I regret mm. resigning from because aside from I before this I did work in really prestigious companies yeah and sometimes I think I wonder if like if I didn't leave earlier or yeah if I didn't leave early would I have been finally you know assigned to another country Mm. by now Mm. or Mm -hmm. instead of this person that I am jealous of Mm -hmm. working in wherever in Europe yeah would that have been me Mm. and then my boss would always remind me like it could have been you but would you really um last that long doing the things that Uh, they were doing in the company yeah and you know these are reminders that Mm -hmm. no i really hate corporate life i really hate working in you know these these multinational companies um and being like a tiny cog and Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. it's so cliche but and i'm i'm happy for those who feel their contribution yeah to a huge company because there are people who do feel their impact but mm-hmm. every time i was in and i've tried a lot <laughs> <laughs> um, of corporate roles i just never really enjoyed that mm-hmm. role um so that's like a reminder i tell myself all the time like if I see, because I still see people that I'm very jealous of. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I see them mm. and I feel like this green monster just squeezing my heart, I always just remember like, well, would I have stayed in X company yeah. for 10 years like they did? Probably mm-hmm. not. And like, would I um, uh, trade what my life now. yeah what i have now mm-hmm. and the freedom i have now mm-hmm. for the corporate slavery that they had to endure to get that yeah i won't either so i mean i'm very petty immature <laughs> so many things but i am grateful for you know yeah. how yeah. Mm. i ended up mm-hmm. um and it's not it's not intentional that I'm here, <laughs> but somehow I was led here. I met the right people who gave me, you know, the the capacity to be okay, but, yeah. where I am now. Mm-hmm. And that includes you as well, because you have been very supportive, and you were <laughs> a client what twice in different yeah. companies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, it's just a constant conscious reminder mm, that mm. you're not you're not doing bad <laughs> maybe in the philippines but it's not that bad <laughs> you know if if it's any consolation as in the corporate world we also envy people like you who have their own business who mm. have uh who handle their own time and you know you, 
you just do whatever you want because sometimes when you're in corporate you just think that all of the things that you're doing it's not really for for you it's for the company all of your ideas mm-hmm. they're not yours because mm-hmm. it's the company's ideas at the end of the day so so that's one thing that that we're envious of i also mm-hmm. particularly remember that I, I i'm very envious of this friend who has a business and still doing corporate at the same time and she's earning a lot you know she she's able to balance two things at the same time so she has best of both worlds and you know i think it's a never ending um struggle a never ending um internalization of what you really want to be in your life or what's your end goal because i was going through some you know i was going through some job interviews a few weeks ago and and they were asking me <laughs> they're asking me you know how do you see yourself five ten years from now with and another I, baby You know, at this point in my life, I, you know, back then I had an answer. You know, when when I was in corporate, I I would always say, you know, I would be a CEO, I would be the head of this department, whichever, whichever, whatever. But now, when they would ask me, I'm like, I have no answer at all. I, like, <laughs> I really don't know because I'm in this new path and something that mm-hmm. I didn't really expect I would be in, and I'm just in for you know a crazy ride. I guess. Did, <laughs> does does having a baby um or yeah, does having a baby affect mm. your career or lifestyle envy? Like did it make you more content or did you make it did it make you like crave for other <laughs> things? Uh before I had a baby, I I always dreamed of living in Bali. Or in <laughs> in Balear, you remember that when I would mm-hmm. I would just surf, and then after I surf, I would you know do work on the side, and I felt like I was gonna be the happiest island girl alive. <laughs> and then that's still a dream until now. That's still one of the mm. things that I want to do. Maybe you know when I re- but I think I'm gonna do that when I retire. I think it. I was really scared to to get into that because it was unsure. That's the thing about us. Mm-hmm. We don't like things that are uncertain. Yeah. People who go That's by true. the book, <laughs> people who go by That's the book, true. they don't like to take uncertain decisions or mm-hmm. dive into all of these things because you know we're not sure where where we're gonna where we're gonna be yeah. left or or what. So. So that's one of the things that I'm really um, envious of. I have a lot of friends now who just drop their lives here in Metro Manila. They're living in either La Union, in Chargao, mm. and they're surfing and working at the same time. And I'm, every time I look at their feeds, I'm like, shit, I should have, I should have been this, I should have been this person, or like, what am, what did I do with my life? But you know. <laughs> I have a baby now. I'm more content. I'm more happier, and I think you know God has different ways of <laughs> <laughs> you know the stars didn't align for me when when that was a uh, the path I had. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. But yeah, going back to your question, I think uh, yeah, having a baby definitely changes the career. I I never thought it would. I didn't mm-hmm. want it to be that way, but it definitely does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. And uh, the only thing that I am careful about is mm. not to turn my, the jealousy into resentment. Yeah. Because I think it's I feel it's just normal for people to be jealous of other yep. people. Um, but if I don't, if I'm not careful, it could easily turn into resentment, and mm-hmm. I think that is a lot more dangerous for me uh, internally or mentally. Uh, And and I just I really don't want to that to happen. Yeah. And like I said, I don't wish these people ill. I'm just thinking, how come? <laughs> Why them how and not me? How come you're not there? Yeah. How come you're not doing the same thing? <laughs> and I know we all say there's no need to compare, but sometimes it's really just difficult not to. Mm-hmm. And social media definitely yes. does not help. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, I just again, I just try to keep remembering. You know, everyone moves at their own pace. Yes. Everyone has a different definition of what success looks like. Like you said, you know, I'm jealous of other people's lives, but mm-hmm. there are also people who yeah. want my life. 
Um, it's, uh, again, everything about life is perspective, mm-hmm. which I really don't have most of the time. <laughs> 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 but really, like, paying attention to where you are, where I am. Yeah. And keeping my nose out of other people's business because at the end of the day, it's their life and it's my life and we're having different <laughs> lives. The Cheese Miss Table.